Well, uh, thank you so very much for having me here tonight. Uh, it's a great opportunity to speak to uh, speak to as many neighbors as possible in, in, in all these forums across the county, and, and it's been uh, uh, it's gotten off to a great start, and we're having a, I'm having a wonderful time doing it. I wanted to introduce myself really quickly. Uh, I, my name is Matt Waver. I, I first moved to Arlington to the Cherrydale neighborhood, and then uh, recently uh, settled in, in, in Crystal City. I'm a Eagle Scout, a 100 Homes for the Homeless Survey volunteer, and a Junior Achievement instructor. I've, I've uh, done a, couple, uh, a Junior Achievement class at Kenmore Middle School. Uh, I, I got into this race because I ran into a lot of people at, at uh, the Foxcroft Heights Planning Association, at various county board meetings and other planning initiatives who didn't feel like their voice was being heard by the county board. Uh, they went to all the meetings, they, they said their piece, but they didn't feel like it was being represented in the final in the final uh, result that came in front of the board. So that's, that, that's why I got into the race, to make sure that everyone's voice is heard on the county board. Uh, I want to talk about some, some uh, substantial issues up front. Uh, first of all is, is our, uh, our budget and our tax rate. Uh, one thing that concerned me in the last budget was that when we have property tax assessments go up 7%, we shouldn't have to raise our tax rates on top of that in order to balance our budget. We should be able to, to uh, fund our priorities within that increased revenue through the increased assessments. On the capital spending plan, uh, what we've seen from the county board in this current cap capital spending plan is a trajectory of spending on capital projects that includes a tax or a rent increase for every Arlington resident each year for the next 10 years in order to maintain our AAA bond rating. And it's built into it, and that increased revenue is needed in order to maintain that AAA bond rate. I think we should have a much more responsible capital spending plan that doesn't lock us into those, those rent and tax increases and gives us the, the flexibility and opportunity to address challenges as they arise. I, I also want to talk about the Columbia Pike Trolley. It's been a, a very uh, 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 hot-button issue in this campaign. Uh, my original plan from the beginning is that uh, we should better connect residents on Columbia Pike to regional transit and, and uh, the community and the, the, uh, the residents of Columbia Pike deserve a better plan than the, than the trolley. Uh, what, what I would propose instead is an enhanced bus service that, that provides service all the way into Roslyn. We've seen a blue line service cuts uh, to the Pentagon City Station and so we've been, that trolley would not connect residents better to transit because it'd be into a station that already has reduced service to it. So instead we should have a, a blue line uh, or a, a trolley that services all the way into Roslyn and connects people to the blue line. Uh, very similar to what the 10E bus does currently where you can get from Crystal City to Roslyn in five minutes where it takes 30 minutes on the train. Thank you very much for, for your attention. I look forward to your questions and uh, you can uh, look for more information on my website at waverow2012.com. Item on the Columbia Pike Trolley uh, project. Uh, we've had uh, studies and then studies and then more studies on the Columbia Pike Trolley. We had a very uh, open process that a lot of people were able to give feedback to the county. Uh, not all that feedback was considered, and, uh, and uh, a very high number of individuals within the county and, and a lot of neighbors uh, provided feedback in written comment and in public comment. And uh, with that amount of information out there, it, um, we should be able to come to a decision uh, against the trolley when there's been that much opposition. I just want to point out the Washington Post took a look at the opposition and found out found that it was an overwhelming opposition in, in the comments. So just want to make sure everyone has that, that full information about how much information there was available before the Columbia Black Trolley vote. Thank you. I just wanted to, to mention really quickly one, one of the amendments that was brought up at the Columbia Pike Neighborhoods Plan was the, the amendment to, uh, to look at towards building the tools necessary to provide that market rate affordable housing that people making fifty, sixty, and seventy thousand dollars a year can afford with, without accessing a government program in order to access those units. And I was very happy that, that the percentage of market rate affordable housing uh, being targeted to be replaced was increased as part of that process. So, so I wanted to wanted to add that in. I also wanted to talk uh, quick, very briefly about the idea of an independent inspector general. I think that we need one. It would be a great tool for the county board and a great tool for the citizens to make sure that the programs that, that we fund uh, through the budget process are both effective and efficient and we make sure that the, the uh, county staff uh, was being employed in, in the best possible way and that their efforts were uh, gaining the most uh, 
the most traction and the most benefit for, for that funding. Uh, it's kind of a, it's been said that, that we already have an independent financial auditor that looks at our financial statements, but an independent inspector general would be different. It's, it's the difference between looking at your bank statement at the end of the month and saying, yes, all those numbers are correct, and looking at that bank statement and said, yes, I spent that money wisely, and I was mo efficient and effective in how I spent my money this month. I got the most bang for my buck, so thanks so much.